Okay, problem number nine is what we're on here now. So they want us to factor the polynomial f of x equal x cubed plus 10x squared minus, uh, plus 19x minus 30, given that k equals negative six is a zero of f of x. And we're gonna use that to find the other factor, uh, the, the other zeros, okay. So now sometimes in, in math books, like when they want us to uh, you know, find the zeros of a polynomial, like they, they're not gonna give us one of the answers, okay? Like we're, we're doing that here. So in other words, um, I have a degree three polynomial, so I can know that there's gonna be three answers. One of the answers is negative six. I just have to find the other two numbers, okay? Now knowing that negative six is a zero means that x minus negative six or x plus six is a factor of f, okay? This is not going to factor by grouping, okay? We, we saw a grouping up here. No matter what I establish as the groups, uh, factor by grouping is not going to work here for this one. I don't have anything in common to all four of these terms. So, you know, the way that I'm doing the problem here is, is the only option that I have, okay? X plus six is a factor of F. Um, now, negative six is a zero, so uh, let me use division, to, um, to factor this further. Uh, negative six is uh, gonna go, and I'm gonna use a, a synthetic division. Negative six will go in the upper left-hand corner of this uh, table that I'll make. And then I'll pick off the uh, uh, coefficients that would be in the top row. So I got one in front of x cubed, a 10 in front of x squared, a 19 in front of x, and a negative 30 at the end. Okay, and then I'm all set up to divide. Uh, so I'm going to bring the one down. One times negative six is negative six. Then add column two, you got 10 minus six, that's four. Four times negative six is negative 24. We add column three. Uh, 19 minus 24 is negative five. Negative five times negative six is 30. And negative 30 plus 30 is zero left over. Now that looks good. That's what we expected because we already know that negative six is a zero. Okay, so like before I even divided, I could already know that the, the remainder is gonna be zero. Okay, now I'm more interested in what's, what's to the left of zero. So when we divide these, which we've done up here, we get uh, x squared plus four x minus five. And let me, uh, multiply both sides of this equation by x plus 6. Next. So I got x cubed plus 10x squared plus 19x minus 30. That's what I'm calling f of x. And on the right, I've got x plus 6 times x squared plus 4x minus 5. x squared plus 4x minus 5 is going to factor further. That factors as x plus five times x minus one. Okay, so then uh, the, the next thing I can do is I can set each factor equal to zero to get the zeros. So x plus six equals zero means that x is negative six. Uh, that's one answer. That's that's not, uh, that, that, that was a number that they already gave me, right? So I didn't find anything new there. Um, but then x plus five equals zero means that x is negative five x minus one equals zero means that x is one. Okay, so these three numbers would be the three zeros. Okay. Um, let's try problem 10 next. So in problem 10, they want us to consider the function f of x equal two x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 19 x squared minus nine x plus nine. We're going to use the rational zeros theorem to list all the possible rational zeros for f. Okay, so I got to find the p values and the q values. The p values are going to be all the factors of the last coefficient. Okay, so what are all the factors of 9? Well, 1, it goes into any number, right, along with negative 1. So I'm going to have plus minus 1. And by the way, I'm going to have plus minus for all these, all these things here. A three goes into nine, along with negative three, so plus and minus three. 
and then 9 is a factor of itself along with a negative 9, so plus and minus 9. The Q values would be all the factors of the first coefficient, 2. So 1 and negative 1 are factors of any number, and then 2 goes into 2 evenly along with negative 2. So I'm going to have plus minus 1 and plus minus 2. Um, now, the p values are always going to be the factors of the last coefficient. The q values are always going to be the factors of the first coefficient. Sometimes students mess this up and they have those switched. Don't do that. If you do that, you get a wrong answer. Okay? So then the possible rational zeros of f are where I take all the uh, uh, values of the form p over q. Okay, so let me begin listing these where 1 or negative 1 happens to be in the denominator. So I'm going to have plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 1, that's plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 1, that's plus or minus 3. And plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 1, that's plus or minus 9. Okay, and then we'll move on to if 2 or negative 2 is seen in the denominator. Um, well, we're going to have uh, plus or minus 1 divided by plus or minus 2, that's plus or minus 1 half. Plus or minus 3 divided by plus or minus 2 is plus or minus 3 halves. And then plus or minus 9 divided by plus or minus 2 is plus or minus 9 halves. Okay? So, now, notice that if, if I were to solve this uh, polynomial, find the zeros, there would be four answers. I can know that right away. Right? Because I got a degree 4 polynomial. So I have no idea what these four numbers look like. But... The rational zeros theorem is, is a powerful theorem because, like, in this last example, you know, they give us a k value in which, which case, like, they're, they're really doing us a huge favor there because they're helping us get started with the problem. In this problem, like, if I were to find the zeros, okay, I know that there'd be four answers. I have no idea what those four numbers look like, though, so I could, I could be spending, a, you know, a long time guessing and checking to get started. But... It makes the most sense to, to use only these numbers to begin guessing and checking. Okay, so like, so it, if, if the number is a fraction, it's going to be listed here. Okay, so like if, I, if I'm trying 5, if I think 5 is a 0, I'm wasting my time because 5 is not a number that came up. Okay? Now, um... The rational zeros theorem is a, is, is a powerful theorem, you know, because, like, there's still guessing and checking here, but uh, I only got, uh, you know, 12 numbers to guess and check with rather than infinitely many numbers, okay? So that'll help me get started with the problem. And uh, when, when I find, you know, an answer, um, I can then continue the problem the way that we did uh, this problem. Okay, we can, we can uh, divide and we can factor further to find the other zeros. Okay, so uh, now, now careful with the rational zeros theorem because the, the rational zeros theorem is saying if the number is a fraction, if the number is a fraction, it's going to be listed. If the number is not a fraction, that's a zero, it's not going to be listed. Okay. So, or if, if it's an imaginary number, which we'll, we'll talk about next here, it's not going to be listed. Okay? And, uh, you know, that would be, a, you know, a kind of a difficult problem if, if none of these numbers were to be listed. But, um, um, you know, that, that could happen. Okay? Uh, and so the, the rational zeros theorem, like, to me, is, is, a, is a pretty powerful theorem to, uh, to use if you're not given a k value, okay, and you want to find the zeros, okay? Um, all right, why don't, we, uh, why don't we go ahead and stop right there in the notes. Uh, we'll pick up with problem 11 in the next uh, video. So in problem 11, I'm going to begin um, talking about complex numbers or imaginary numbers, okay? That's, that's really important. Um, so we'll, we'll hit that in the next video there.